Okay, in this video I'm going to take a crack at the photoelectric effect and then move on to look at the new material that was in the Turning Points course which was all about the idea of stopping potentials and that sort of thing. So a couple of basic equations that you should already know. The speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, that's, so that's one you should know already. And e equals hf, so the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of that photon. And what you'll have come across in AS in unit 1 is that the maximum possible kinetic energy of a photoelectric emission is the photon energy minus the work function, which is the minimum amount of energy required to emit a surface free electron. So and, uh, like each different materials will have different work functions, but uh, the a material will always have the same work function. So let's take a look at my diagram, and I want to first look at this red line here. So you've got a wave in the well, it's obviously in the visible spectrum, but it's in at the red end, which we know means it has a longer wavelength or lower frequency, and as we can see no electron gets emitted. So that must mean the photon energy is below the work function, so none is emitted. Then we've got this blue line, and obviously this is towards the opposite end of the visible spectrum, so it has a higher fre frequency or a shorter wavelength, and then it has sufficient energy to cause a photoelectron to be emitted, so the frequency of this light must be above the threshold frequency. Now the key thing I'd like to draw to your attention here is that the photoelectric effect, the electrons that are being emitted are all free or delocalized electrons in the material structure. So they're not being pulled out of atoms, they're already free or delocalized so they can be quite close to the surface or moving around in the material. They're not attached to uh, nu uh, nuclei inside the material, which is quite important. And the other key thing is that the electrons need not necessarily be on the surface, which is why we always say that the maximum possible kinetic energy is the photon energy minus the work function, but it could be less than that because if the electron is deeper inside the material, you'll have to do some work to get it to the surface, and then so then you limit the amount of kinetic energy it could have. So that's a couple of the key principles. So I'm going to move on to have a look at the idea of stopping potential because that was the new part that was introduced. So instead of in the, the original photoelectric ex effect experiment where one of the key the assumptions was that your the material was at zero potential, what you do is you can get a wavelength of light you know causes photoelectric emission. So we've got our blue light here, we know we've got a photoelectric emission. And what we do is we begin to increase the charge uh, the charge of the of the material that you're shining the radiation on and make it more positive because what we know is that the electron will be attracted back towards the positive surface okay so eventually as you increase and increase and increase that potential you'll hit a point where the photo electron is no longer emitted and what you're interested in is the lowest potential at which that occurs. And that's what's called the stopping potential. And at that point, when you reach the stopping potential, so I think I'll just label it in here. So that V is your stopping potential. So at that, at that point, you know that then that the work, basically the work you're doing on the electron would be equal to the possible kinetic energy that it would have and using that it allows you actually to work out what would the velocity of the photoelectric emission be given the radiation that you're shining on it which is quite a useful thing to know.